I'm an assistant professor of forestry at UVM Extension, so I'm the state extension forester. Um, and I really focus on climate change uh, impacts to forests and how that affects their health and physiology. So I'm going to be talking about sugar maple health or maple health in general, and I'll talk about some management um, that you all can consider using to sort of uh, factor in climate change and maple health in your uh, sugar bushes and your forests. So, you know, the biggest issue for maples right now is climate change because as I'll show, climate change is gonna interact with all the other stressors that maples face. So this is sort of the overarching umbrella um, with which, you know, all these other processes and stressors interact. And so this is true for maple, true for all of our other species too, but I'll talk about specifically um, how climate change um, affects maple trees. And we've seen in Vermont an increase in temperature and an increase in precipitation um, with climate change. And of course, you know, we can expect more changes, but a lot of that is uncertain at this point. But expect that these changes are here right now and, and probably more will come. So what does this mean for maple in particular? Well, one of the things we're seeing is actually a benefit to maple trees is a longer growing season. So these are data actually from here um, that Josh Hallman at the state of Vermont collects. And it's a length of time between leaf out in the spring and leaf senescence in the fall. So it's essentially a measure of how long these trees have to grow. And we're seeing that's increased about two weeks since the 90s. And so this means we're seeing trees often grow more. Um, they have more time to photosynthesize and store more sugar. So you could effectively see um, you know, more reserves and, and sap yields potentially. So this is, can be a good thing for sugar maple um, physiology. However, you know, most of the other <laughs> impacts of climate change are not as positive. And one of the really uh, big issues for maple is winter temperatures. And we're seeing that climate change is not altering the temperature regi regime equally throughout the year. Winters are warming quite a bit faster than other seasons, two and a half times faster. And that's, you know, really we're a hot spot in the Northeast and the Midwest for seeing those increases in winter temperature. And of course, the biggest thing that this affects is whether we have snow, how deep it is, how long it lasts. Um, and for sugar maple in particular, many of you know, it has very shallow feeder roots. And these are the roots that are scavenging nutrients, getting oxygen, getting water from the soil. And so these can actually be physically damaged when there isn't snow on the ground. So snow sort of acts as this insulative blanket on the soil. And so we've seen things, there's been research from places like Hubbard Brook um, here in Vermont as well, that's looked at the impact of reduced snowpack and we see things like reduced sap yields. We see things like reduced growth, um, term length of uh, branch growth, diameter growth. So it can really affect the physiology of the trees. One year of this damage, really not a big deal. What we're concerned with is if this becomes a pattern um, for the trees. Um, and of course, then we get this other um, effect of snow is that it's a water source in the spring when the trees need that water. Um, and so what we're seeing is that stream flow, peak stream flow in the spring is happening earlier and earlier, but the trees might not leaf out at the same time depending on the temperature. So you can have a little bit of a mismatch there. Um, certainly with climate change, we think we might have just more wacky weather events. So we had one this year, actually did not affect sugar maple to my surprise. Uh, we had that big freeze event on May 18th. Um, but traditionally in other years, sugar maple has been the species most affected because it leafs out the earliest of our species. So really goes, you know, its strategy is to leaf out early. Um, and hedge its bets against a uh, spring frost, but sometimes that's not a great strategy. And these are all photos I took of different years of frost damage to sugar maple trees. And you can see they kind of create this deformed leaf shape. Um, the edges of the leaves are dead. Um, it might reflush a second set of leaves, which you can imagine is a big energy uh, use for the tree. Um, and generally the leaves just won't be, won't be as big. And so that's the way that the tree is gaining, making carbohydrates and sap. And so you can imagine a, fall, a year following a frost event 
the tree might be a little bit more stressed. Um, I mentioned how climate change interacts with other stressors, and this is really important. We don't really know how this is going to play out, but of course sugar maple has a number of insect pests. Right? So spongy moth, um, fall webworm, number of leaf mites, this is, or galls, this is spindle gall, um, uh, sal prominent, uh, maple leaf cutter, and then sugar maple borer. There's more than this. Um, this is just some photos that I had of different um, sugar maple insects. And we think that with that longer growing season, warmer winters, some of these insects might benefit from those changes. So they might have more generations in a year. They might be able to grow bigger and therefore eat more um, leaves or um, wood. And so we don't really know how this is going to interact, but there's a lot of research looking into these interactions. And so, you know, sort of expect that these, these uh, relationships might um, change and that some of these insects might become more damaging. We also have uh, earthworms, and earthworms in particular love sugar maple stands. Um, we have European earthworms. So all of our earthworms, you might have heard this, many of you know, are not native to our region. They were all wiped out when we had glaciers. So we have a few species of European worms, and those have been in a lot of our forests. I see them pretty far in the woods, um, and they are, yeah, been there for decades. We also have the new um, jumping worm, crazy snake worm, because it looks like a snake um, when it's agitated. And that, I don't know that we've had any examples I don't know if anybody knows here of it being in the woods, it's certainly coming up in gardens and in you know, people's lawns and sort of more developed areas. Um, both of you know, all earthworms, what they do is they churn through organic matter very quickly. And the crazy snake worm does this even faster. And so generally these earthworms love sugar maple leaves. They're easy to digest compared to you know, oak and beech. Um, they speed up decomposition. They can even, with their burrowing, they can, do, they can affect mycorrhizae. So those are those fungal connections between uh, tree roots that can help share nutrients. Um, it can cause uh, drying out of soils. So we could see an effect of climate change with sites that have earthworms um, that we might have more soil drying. Um, and there's a lot of concerns that these earthworms might affect regeneration of sugar maple. And as we see more rainfall, we are seeing it coming in heavy rainfall events. I'm sure this isn't a surprise to anybody recently. We've just had deluge after deluge. Um, but when we think about the forest, um, these rain events can have negative consequences. So they can actually wash out nutrients. You think about sugar maple, very nutrient uh, demanding species. And so that's a concern that we have. So some things like calcium and magnesium can be leached from the soil. Um, certainly, they can erode soils and wash away that leaf litter that protects those fine feeder roots. Um, and of course, if you're thinking about your infrastructure in your sugar bush, you know, problem for roads and culverts and things like that. Alex. Yes. Yeah, that's what I saw in our sugar bush when I went out and looked. Is um, I wouldn't have thought it, but right down to the bare earth, and there's a pretty good layer of like leafy, duffy material there, and. Uh, I'd say four to six inches in a lot of areas just completely washed away. Yeah. Um, I've never seen the forest floor really look like that. Yeah, I've been walking around a lot since, I mean, there was different events that we've had in the past like month and they've been in, in different locations. Yeah, and certainly you see that leaf litter. And that's actually a good, and I'll talk about when talking about management, that's actually a really good way to diagnose issues is to walk out after a storm, see where that leaf litter moved, see where the water flowed. Can you you know, move that water into a depression, a place where it's not going to gain velocity and cause more damage. Because what's happening is often that water then finds an old logging road or an old, you know, just shoots down the slope. Um, and when it's moving fast, it moves more, you know, more material. Um, when we think about warmer, wetter conditions, fungi love those, those uh, conditions. We're seeing that this year. Tons of mushrooms out in the woods. That's great if you forage for edibles, but it's also can mean things like foliar diseases. I think 
that's happening <laughs> this year. We're having a lot of foliar diseases like anthracnose. Um, could also mean things like more uh, decay fungi like armillaria, just a really you know, benefit from those conditions. And even though this is sort of counterintuitive, even though we're having more rain, we think that we're going to have punctuated heavy rainfall events and then maybe periods of lack of rain. And one thing that's really important to know about climate change, when we have warmer air temperatures, that just means the, the air can hold more water. And that's sort of why we're seeing more heavy rain events. The air um, <coughs> can hold more water and then it hits mountain ranges and releases that stored water. Um, but it also means that it will suck the water from surfaces, that warmer air. So that means drier soils, uh, leaf surfaces, things like that. Um, and so, you know, this is most mature trees, even though sugar maple isn't very drought tolerant, they'll just shut down in periods of drought and, and hunker down. What we really worry about is the little regenerating trees, you know, not deep um, roots. And we've seen this, there's been a couple documented uh, examples that I found, uh, anecdotal examples of uh, sugar maple regeneration, more full uh, failure in years when we have punctuated drought. But of course it could, you know, it can definitely stress trees, cause lower growth, sap yields, things like that. Um, and, you know, we could see things like more ice events that can be problematic, again, for your infrastructure, um, you know, tubing, if we have uh, branches break, um, things like these, like heavy, wet uh, snow events that, that can be really problematic for saplings um, and wind events and things like that. 